And we're back with some more X4. And in our current quest to take over the galaxy, we have a few things we need to take care of. One is capturing the Earl King. It's like an experimental battleship type thing that would be very nice for us to get our hands on. However, what we're looking at here is not an Earl King. It is a... Chayaku Vanguard. Chayaku Vanguard. Now, this is a trader transport craft. It's like a, it's like a large trader. No one really uses a lot of large traders. They have their niche uses. But why are we looking at these? Well, uh, allow me to throw your eyes on a website. This is Rogies X... Rogies? Rog I think that's the first time I've said that out loud. Rogues? Rogies? Yeah, whatever. We're going to go to Rogies. So, Rogies website here. This is where you find all the information on ships and stations and all that stuff. This seems to be the wiki for X4. I don't know why that is, but it's really good. Now, uh, what we want here is we're looking for capture crew. We want to be able to capture this ship, so we need crew capacity, and that's what all we're really interested in. And this is the ship section. There are so many ships in this game, it's crazy. Like, for example... This is a list of all the small ships in this game, each one having their own cockpit, weapons, all sorts of stuff. It's kind of huge. You begin to realize just how massive this game is, especially when there's only 20 devs on the team. I think that includes... Actually, no. There's 20 people in the company, so I assume that includes everyone, including marketing and the guy who gets coffee or, you know, whatever. So there's a lot of people, a lot of stuff going on. But importantly here, if we go into large ships and we sort by crew capacity, we will find with Sh the Shayaku Vanguard has the most crew capacity of any of them. 225 crew, costs about 4.5 million to buy. I tricked mine out, so they're about 11, 12 million, but whatever, whatever. So, we've got 225 crew capacity on these, and they're actually pretty cost efficient at it. I mean, you could go all the way up to extra large, but even then, only these ships come close, and all of them are, are 14 million or more. So usually you're just better off, and some of them you can't even buy. In fact, the Earl King, which is the one we're trying to get our hands on, that one's, uh, yeah, that one's the 14 million one. Never mind. So 15 million or more to come even close in cargo capacity, which is why we have bought all of those Shayaku Vanguards. Well, two of them. So we have these Shayaku Vanguards here, and we are docked at... Vigor Syndicate Shipyard. Vigor Syndicate Shipyards. And the reason we're docked there is this place actually produces decent marines. And um, it doesn't actually tell you, so you kind of... Don't, you'll never figure this out. Well, I would never have figured it out if I hadn't actually just looked it up. So what we can do here is we can go, we would like to upgrade the ship, go in, and you'll currently we have no crew on board. We have the captain, but that's it. And we're going to say, give us marines. 225 of them, please. Now, they're all going to show up as recruits for now, but we're going to confirm that order. In fact, uh, we're also going to get the second one in there. I would like you to also do the same thing. Number two, also sold to buy marines. That's pretty expensive. And now they should upgrade and... Oh, actually, no, never mind. They were docked at the shipyard. They have to actually go to the maintenance bay. So, where's the maintenance bay? I presume the maintenance bay is one of those things down there. There's actually two different types of maintenance bay. Uh, one for large, one for extra large. They are large ships. So, let's just fast forward time a bit until they get there. Uh, could you two stop passing through each other? That's a little bit too close for comfort. I mean, get a room or get a shipyard. Actually, you are at a shipyard. You know what? Never mind. Just, you know, stop doing it. It's fine. Oh, I think it's found the correct docking bay, which appears to be that one over there. Oop. Damn it. Yeah, so our Shriaku Vanguard is parked up there, taking on its new complement of marines. And where's our other Shriaku? Okay, it's down there. Shriaku Vanguard. All right, upgrade complete. Our second one is going in for a top-up. Uh, let's see, you. Give us a look at your... Ah, yes. Here is how many Marines are on board. 153 are raw recruits and 72 are veterans. If you buy your Marines at somewhere that's sort of Vigor Syndicate Shipyard or I think it's the... Ah, damn it, this split. The orangey guys over here. So those orangey ones and those orangey ones. Now, don't quote me on those orangey ones over there. I'm not sure. The Vigor ones, I can definitely say, though, yes, they will give you better Marines than average. So once we've acquired these, it's time to go off and find ourselves the Earl King and capture it. Right. Now, we're going to cheese the bejesus out of this because, well, why not? It's a game you cheese a lot in. Uh, it's the cheesest of games. Now, over here somewhere is this one. Yes, this is the the Earl King. It's always here. As in, it is always in the sector Windfall 3, the Horde. Uh, it is always located at this big keep safe thing. And I found it while going around looking for things, but I'll get back to that later, but I found it by doing a ping with a sensor ping and it showed up on the map. Though you can just go looking for it at this exact location and it will always be there. So we're going to get our Shayakus and we're going to tell them both to head over close to this location. Uh, you guys all go fly and wait over there if you wouldn't mind. Perfect. 
and we'll just have to wait until they get there. In fact, we might leave the sector. See, the thing is, if we go near it, uh, the AI doesn't like the human player going near that thing at all at all. So we're just going to leave the sector. In fact, we're going to go pop over to 18 billion, our, uh, our home sector, while we're waiting for our Shayakus to get there. Our ships have arrived. We are parked right beside the Vic, or Vic Erking, whatever. We're, we're Earl King, the one we, the ship we want to capture. And while that's been going on, uh, I've been taking some precautions. You see, uh, these guys might go angry with us when we do this. And this is their entrance into our territory. Well, our main factory location. So we've decided to install a little defense platform. One of our traditional T-posers. Yep, it's set up right there. I think it's still missing the last module, but it doesn't matter. There's, there's so many guns on this that unless... Like, I have a fair chance that anything that comes through that gate would get annihilated if things go pear-shaped. We've also got another one built on the opposite side here, just in case things go really wrong. We've got plenty of defenses. It would be a bit hairy if they went evil with us, but I hope they don't. Uh, there's a good chance they probably won't. Probably. I hope. Anyway, we're going to go back to our Shayaku Vanguard thingies. And then what we're going to do is we are going to right-click on the Earl King, and we are going to go board. And we get to choose what people go boarding. First up, uh, all the veterans are going to go in uh, from both ships. Yep. Uh, also, we're going to send in as many recruits as will fit on boarding pods. I don't know how many... Okay, that's the maximum amount we're allowed to send. Uh, perfect. Now you get to choose what kind of approach. Uh, combat Target combat effect is very weak. No, we're going to go very strong. Risk very high. Okay, uh, strong. Very strong. We have 7,223 boarding strength, so hopefully this should work. Oh, and I should probably do something here with their turrets. Uh, you know what? Defend, attack all enemies. No, there should be some other way. I don't want them to actually... Yeah, there we go. We'll disarm them. We're going to disarm all the turrets. We don't want them starting a fight. If they get shot... Well, that is a sacrifice I am willing to make. Their deaths will be glorious. Or sad, who cares? What does matter is, though, that they launch the troops and the troops manage to board these ships and that we don't annoy the Syndicate. Well, I would prefer not to annoy them because they're right next door and they do stock some decent Marines. If we have to kill them, we have to kill them, but I'd prefer not to. If we could take this with minimal problems and then come back later and maybe use that to kill them, that would be even funnier if we use the Earl King to murder them. All right, let's see how this goes. Pod launched. Moving to target. Stay sharp. Oh, that... Wow, that's... That's a lot of boarding pods. Keep an eye on sensors. For... for what? Okay, I understand. You're in tiny little boarding pods. Uh, how about you? You have not launched at all. You can... leave. Just, uh... Fly over there if you wouldn't mind. Steady. Wait, do you have to stick Contact. around? Uh, board executing fly and wait. Uh, this guy is still thinking about Steady. it. Contact. Making preparations to breach. Wow. They just like spawn everywhere. Follow that course. Okay then. This might take a little time. We haven't done any damage to the ship or its hull, so they are going to have to drill through. It's going to take them a while, I believe, if the uh, the internet is to be believed. So let's just leave them to it. Um, you should probably retreat, though, the moment this is done. How are you looking? If I tell them to bugger off with the boarding, finish. Making preparations to breach. Contact. Making preparations to breach. Contact. Making preparations to breach. Contact. Making preparations to breach. So from what I can see here, if you just go back and you hit the board option again, it tells you what stage we're on. So there's three stages. Stage one is complete, which is, well, get to the target. Uh, launch pods at combat effectiveness range. Basically, the turrets will try and shoot it, shoot the pods down, so you want to destroy their turrets first. We're doing this from out of sector, so this thing doesn't have any turrets as far as I'm aware, and there was nothing defending it, so... Well, bada bing, bada boom, we're in. Then it's uh, infiltration. I presume this is where we drill through the hull. So drilling through the hull before our marines can actually get into the fighting, which would be stage three. So right now they're kind of drill through the hull, and I presume if there were fighters around, they'd be trying to kill the the drop pods that are attached to the hull, and we'd be trying to protect the drop pods. But again, 
no one's trying to kill anyone, so yeah, they're just going to sit there until they actually breach it. Then will come the assault, which is where, this is where there's the defending crew, and then here's our attacking marines, and the risk is very low. Well, our boarding attack strength is ridiculously high. So, assuming everyone survives the boarding part 2 stage infiltration and gets to assault, this should be fairly handy. Let's, uh, let's skip forward a bit. Go! Move it! You are free to engage. Hey! They eventually made it through the hull. Lots of resistance. Of course there's lots of resistance. It's going to blow! What's going to blow? Don't blow it up. I'm working on bypassing the lockdown. We are pushing through. Lots of resistance. Okay, no one's gone angry over here. Remember, don't board angry. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. This seems to be working. We are pushing through. Lots of resistance. Yeah, okay. Follow They're, my lead. The boarding resistance has dropped to 86, and our boarding attack is 5,320. Continuing combat. I think we got this. Defending crew 109, and I think all the good crew are gone. Oh, yeah. It, it, Falling back. Uh, I have a team working on bypassing a lockdown. Okay, good, good. There's 11 left. Three. Now, I don't want this to run too fast. I'm terrified that the moment this ship becomes ours, all of Vig are just going to try and, like, murder us. Okay. And achievement unlocked. King of the Scrap Heap. Uh, is that... Is that it? Stage complete? Um... Right. Is this thing mobile? No, it's going to need a captain and stuff, and we're probably going to have to put crew on it. I got some marines. You know what? I think we can promote one of those marines to captain. Do any of you have any piloting skills? Like, I mean, even a little bit of piloting skills. Ugh, this is going to take a minute, isn't it? Wait a minute, what do I do? It like, Just promote him to captain. There you go. You're now captain of the ship. Excellent. I don't know who you are, but you've just been promoted. Now, then we can go back into here... Jade Young, whatever. Uh, we would like to calm you for a moment. Uh, give you a seminar. There you go. You're now a two-star pilot. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, I should have realized that you can just immediately promote people. Now, uh, you. We want you to probably come back to our home sector for now. In fact, come over here. I want you to dock and wait at the Teladi shipyards. Can that thing move? Uh... Hey, it's moving. And no one seems to care. Perfect. In that case, we'll uh, take our Shayaku thingies back home as well. You guys can go park at the Vigor Syndicate. They don't seem to mind you guys hanging around. Um, perfect. Now, there are some other things. We can't really use this ship yet until we do a few other things, but I've done a bit of work in the background. You can tell by the enormous satellite coverage we've got in several areas. But, uh, yeah, I I'll get around to that in a second. Just let me uh, bring these things home and make sure everything's uh, honky-dory with the Vig Syndicate. We've brought the Earl King back to our home base. Well, 1800... Now, where are you? 18 billion, that was it. Ah, here we are, right ahead of us. Let's get a look at this beautiful monstrosity. Well, it's not going to look that pretty. The problem is it's basically a ship made out of scraps. But it turns out the people who made it kind of knew what they were doing, sort of maybe. It never really got finished correctly, though, I believe, is the... Ooh. So this is the Earl King. It looks like something put together in a scrapyard. But it's supposedly a very good ship. And looking at the stats that I looked up on it, this seems to be one of the better destroyers. This and, well, this versus the Asgard, let's say. The Asgard might have more firepower, but this thing has far more maneuverability and quite a good all-rounder. Now, Aaron, let's, Sentinel. let's hop Earl on board. King. Huh. Okay, don't know what I was expecting. This is Access Fleet Console? It's map. It basically brings up the map system. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Nice! Uh, you are Access Gunnery Controls. No, it just, uh... You can't even shoot here. This does nothing. Looks cool, though. Ooh! Okie dokie then. Very nice, very nice. Now, oh, now here's the problem. We're going to take command of the ship here. We are docked at a shipyard, and we can go to upgrade and repair. The problem is, this thing can't really be upgraded. Uh, let me try and point this out. So, like, we can put on better thrusters. Thrusters are about the only thing we can install in this. 
Uh, it can only take Mark 1 shields. Uh, where is it? We can't put the main weapons on it. We, we just, it doesn't have main weapons that you can buy. Uh, when it comes to turrets, most of them can't actually take anything except for, I think it's four turrets can't be if, equipped with normal combat weapons, or maybe it's only two. Oh my god. Yeah, so these turrets, these sections here can be equipped with normal turrets, though, um, yeah, good luck with that. They're pretty terrible. So basically, you can't really equip this with weapons. Uh, it doesn't come with the best engines available. Uh, generally, the turrets and main weapons don't work, so you're kind of stuck with a bit of a, well, a dud. However, there are things we can do to improve this ship dramatically. Uh, that requires us to do a bu bunch of hunting for blueprints, and then we will have to manually build, or, well, we'll have to build all of the weapons ourselves after we figure out what they are. Uh, this may take a second. Right, so we have the Earl King. We finally acquired it, but it's complete trash. How do we make it better? Well, okay. You, get out of, get out of the seat. Can I help? Mom? No! No, you can't. Stop messing with my... Yeah, there we go. These are called data vaults. You find them scattered data about the vault. place. There's... Oh god, I want to say 30 to 50 data vaults scattered around the entire map. They're all over the shop. But, there are five that are incredibly important that are located in a specific number of sections. Okay, let's just slow down a little bit here. Now, the sections they are located in are all related to the Earl King, which is why you want to go grab them, because it contains blueprints. Blueprints for weapons and engines that you can utilize on your shiny new scrap ship. Wait, dull new scrap ship? What, whatever. Let's just, uh, where is it? They can be located in Windfall 1, Windfall 3, and Windfall 4. Actually, I'm shabby on my Roman numerals, so that might be 6, but I think it's 4. Anyway, it could also be located in Avarice 1, 4, and 5. So, basically, these six sectors are where it can be located. Best thing to do I found, well, I went around using scanning, so I would go around, I would set the, uh, where is it? We would go to long range scan mode. Then we would do a big charge up. And it would make that sound. Yeah, you can hear that sort of, the sound that thing gives off when it gets pinged. That was okay. The problem is you have to be in about, Sometimes 20 kilometers, sometimes 60. It seems to be really inconsistent and very hard to do. I ended up flying around for hours inside these three sectors, or, well, these six sectors, trying to fi figure it out. However, in the end, what I found was the fastest way. I found all of them but one, and then uh, I basically just spammed advanced satellites everywhere. Uh, another option is to run around with a lot of fighters and spam those as well. Uh, another option after that is... Oh, yeah, there's actually someone made a tool that runs a batch file on your PC that rips open the save file and locates where they are and strips about and gives you the coordinates directly. That's how frustrating it was for some people for this. They literally made a batch file to figure out where it was. Kind of impressive, to be honest. However, if you have enough fighters or you have enough money to just spam the place in advanced satellites, you can generally do it as well. Oh, and uh, just say you've scanned an area or you've put down your satellites and you haven't seen it, what you can do is you can do... Just do a search for data up here in the top right. And boom. You can see there is a data vault. There is a data vault. There is a data vault. Uh, another one and another one. In fact, one was like basically three of them were in this sector, which is why I think I found it so hard. I found two in this first time around. And, it, and I, I just didn't think there'd be a third. I was stupid. So uh, yeah, it eventually it turned out to be way over here on the edge. And I'd even placed the satellites and moved on. It's just I hadn't done a search for data. Anyway, enough of that. That's uh, me sort of getting a little bit frustrated with how long this took to find. But it's okay, it's okay, we got there at the end. We've got the Earl King, and this is the last data vault. I've opened all the others. Oh, and one thing, let's just make sure Zippy doesn't leave us. You see, Zippy here is our high-speed ship for, well, our personal carrier for going around the place. Let's make sure they have no orders. We want to make sure they hang around so that when we leave here, they, uh, they're actually there to pick us up. Pegasus, Vanguard. And then we're just going to pop out here and use our spacesuit. Now these data vaults are pretty much, they're not all the same, but they all have similar things going on. They'll have these solar panels along the sides, and they'll have these little things right here that are red. Let's zap those. Uh, you have to give it a certain distance. Yeah, there we go. No, never mind. Come on. Alright, there we go. And that rotates the saddle, or the solar panels, and it also will open one of these things down here. See that door down there that just opened? And we just have to do that two more times. There goes another solar panel. Last one. Perfect. 
Then we pop down here. There are should be three open doors, and one of them will contain what we're looking for, which is a blueprint. Uh, you, what do you got? Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. pressure leak detected. Well, of course there's a pressure leak detected. And there, we fixed that one. I think that's the last thing we have to fix. There's two more of those red things we could pop, but as far as I can tell, they don't do anything for these uh, Earl King Blueprints data vaults. There's other data vaults you can get on the map that are not related to the Earl King, but they're different, and they actually can have more or less or all sorts of random stuff in them. But these five specific ones in the sectors I've pointed out, all of these are related to the Earl King, and they will always have the blueprint in there. Ooh. Unlock blueprint for Earl King Medium Turret. And that was the last one. I've collected all the other four already, I just left this one to last just so I could demonstrate it. And we also got a security decryption system, a security slicer, a basic seminar management, and a little bit of crafting materials. Perfect. I don't think there's anything in the last one. Is there? No, nope, nothing. Also, there's uh, usually down the bottom. Second. Come on. If you go down the bottom here, there's normally some other stuff you can uh, tap open. And it opens the doors on the bottom. But for some reason, there's nothing in these things. As in, if we open that. It opens these doors, but there seems to be nothing in them. Not in the Earl King ones. Alright. So we have blueprints for the Earl King to make a whole bunch of really fancy, shiny stuff for it. Basically, a very custom engine, and a couple of custom weapons. And yes, it should give us... The station oh, built in to an asteroid so massive it withstands even the most vigorous of tides. Well, that's if wonderful. If you're not already accommodated at one of our safe havens or on the way out of the system, we now strongly advise you to engage your travel drive and haste into safety. Of course, we at Tidebreak recommend our own establishment, the Drifting Buoy, for your visit. That's it for now. Fly safe. That guy? Yeah, he's telling you about the system which has an unstable sun which erupts. They call it the tide. Happens once an hour. Uh, I think it's once an hour? Yeah, about once an hour. It'll spread out and basically it annihilates all ships in the sector. So you have to go dock at a station to survive. All of the stations need some special thing. It's, it's all part of a DLC expansion pack thing. But not going to care about it. We're leaving this sector before the sun pops. Right. Entering system. Let's go back to 18 billion. We're going to have to spend an enormous amount of money before we can use the Earl King, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Or at least mildly fun when we get it functional. C can we just take a moment to stop and appreciate how just stupidly overpopulated this sector is with our junk? There is just ships everywhere trading everything. It's, it's insane. We also have so much potential money tied up in some of these. Right now... We can check under our uh, our empire here, and we have a total net worth of about 5 billion. 5 billion in all of resources and assets. About 3.7 billion of that is it built into stations. May have went slightly overboard. Anyway, to, uh, to fix up the Earl King, the Earl King which we came here this episode to get sorted, we're going to need an ability to build extra large ship stuff. So to do that, we're going to need some blueprints. Now, where did I leave that Taladi representative? Ah, yes, here they are. Or I could just actually go look up reps and... Yeah, there's the Tadadi guy, which would have brought me here and that would have been faster, but hey. I put in all that effort to rename everyone and... Ooh, there's a whole bunch of baddies over there. Entering system. Yanamos Zura. Look at all that stuff we could grab. No, we don't need it. We have all... Remind me to put a defensive platform there. Actually, no, don't. Uh, this is going to cost a bunch of fighters deaths, which will mean they'll have to buy replacements. And they might buy them from us. So, you know, that works. Let's go down and have a quick chat with this blueprint person. You're going to have to pay them just an absolutely obscene amount of money. And I am not looking forward to it. This is going to hurt our bank balance. Something shocking. Assuming we can actually afford what we're here to buy. Oh, yes. Okay, we are here to build the uh, the build modules. And we've, bu we've got the small and medium fabrication bays and maintenance bays, but what we want is the extra large ship fabrication bays and maintenance bays. Oh god, that's expensive. Ugh. Like, it's, it's gonna cost us, like, half a billion to pay for both of the ones we're looking for. You know what? Let's just buy the extra large. Oh, that hurts. Yes, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm. Good profit to you. You smug son of a... Yeah. Yeah. Mm, no, no, no. I'm not going to war with them. I'm not going to war with them. Don't, don't get me wrong. 
it's really frustrating, but we, we've actually gotten on really well with the Teladi. They're, they're money-grubbing lunatics, but, you know, there are money-grubbing lunatics. All right. We're going to teleport back home, and then we're going to start construction in 18 billion of a shipyard. Entering system. And once the shipyard is complete, we can then use the shipyard to upgrade the Earl King. Oh, and I have set a scout to scout out the very furthest edges of 18 billion. Normally, 18 billion shouldn't be showing you about this much map space. But uh, I discovered this sort of big long trail of asteroid stuff that was great for mining. There's uh, there's just like loads of mining potential out here. So I thought I'd just triple check by sending a scout out to the very farthest edges to see if there's any other mining stuff. There is not. There is just no more mining stuff. I should probably stop that, but uh, the game has to keep expanding the map every time it happens, and I just find it mildly amusing. So please ignore the ginormous size of this map. Okay, we got to build ourselves a station. Uh, let me give me a minute to pick a location. I think for this, we don't want to create in the asteroid field, and we still want to keep it close to all our stuff. I mean, we're totally going to overload this sector, but who cares? Uh, we will put you right about there. That is perfect. We'll buy a license. It's a million. Who cares? Considering we just dropped... Mm. Well, let's not think about it. Agassiz, Vanguard. Just money. Just money. You can see all our star bases off in the distances. Oh, wow, we have some big shipyards. Well, anyway, we are going to put ourselves in a large shipyard production facility right here. It'll also allow us to maintain them as well. Where are you? Build modules. Ship fab. Oof. Yep, that's a big one. Ooh, we need lots of space either side. Okay, we'll put you up at the top. Oh no, too high. So I fiddled about a bunch and I made two of them because I don't think we need two, but I want to try. Why not? All right, uh, we're going to need some storage modules to go on that. Uh, liquid, no, just container storage should be fine. Hmm. How do we want to engineer this? Right, I think I've got this. We've got two extra large fabrication bays. We, we, okay, one of them is going to get built first, and then after that is built, it'll build down this little segment here, and it'll build out these uh, standard docks. Once the standard docks are done, it'll build storage and some housing, and then it'll go down and build the second extra large uh, fabrication bay. And once these are done, we can start applying the blueprints we've gotten our hands on. I think. I mean, I hope. It's only going to cost us 6,000 electronics, 12,000 energy cells, and 22,000 hull parts. Now, isn't it a good thing that... Oh, actually, we should probably assign out a builder, shouldn't we? Yeah, where did I put that builder? Yep, assign a builder. Um, we're not going to use one of our own. We'll grab whoever's not busy. Who's around? You. I'll have to go scan them to make sure they've got enough construction drones. If the ship doesn't have 30 construction drones, it'll take it too long. Oh, and that weird noise you just heard? That's a mission completing. Took me forever to figure that one out. I really should have figured that out a lot faster. Hey, that's going to be the bare bones of the shipyard. It's not going to have much production capacity because, well, all of the stuff it needs is being produced elsewhere right now. All of our other factories are kind of, well, producing everything we need. For example, this is everything... Oh, okay, we'll start with Greasy Joe's. Greasy Joe's over here, only purpose is to produce food and medical supplies for our population. That is it. In fact, I may have underdone the uh, medical supplies, so there's currently like about 60 of them queued up or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a rather large construction project going on right now with a lot of things good to go. We should be good on this one. I shouldn't have to come back and have a look at this for at least, you know, 24 hours. 24 hours of constant play and it'll be fine. Uh, wharf of money printing over here. Well, it was running a little bit short on missiles, so we chucked on a couple of extra stacks of production. We've got loads of solar going on. This is... um. It's well stacked, so this is uh, our other station. And finally, everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, this one is... I can't even remember. What are you queued up to build? Ah, large Teladi biomes. Yeah, we need a whole bunch of those. Uh, and then about oof, another 15 or so hull production, because you can never have enough hull parts. We just have... Well, we this thing is actually running quite well. It just needs more people, which is why we're putting on more biomes, so that we can store more people and then maybe produce a little bit more. This thing's actually kind of huge. In fact, all of our stations are kind of huge right now. But that's fine. That's fine. We'll skip it forward a bit till the shipyard is done, and then we can take the Earl King in and get it refitted and bring it up to spec. And by spec, I mean murderously killing. And this is the result. A rather dodgy-looking starbase. Only one of the docks is complete. There's a second one coming online in a bit. Uh, we've got a couple of storage modules and a couple of people modules. And that's all, really. Well, okay, there's a dock area over there as well for uh, medium-sized ships. So this, this is going to be what we use to build or, or to upgrade our Earl King. Uh, Earl King, one second. Now, let's get this thing over here and get it stocked up. 
we are going to get rid of that. Uh, we are going to get you in here. We are going to upgrade and repair. And there is three Earl King engines. Now, here, here's the thing. The Earl King gets special extra large engines, which means its speed is going to go from 182, which is quite good for an extra large ship. Like, most of them can't go that fast. But with the Earl King engines, it can do 355 meters per second and has a travel speed of 11 kilometers per second. This thing is blazingly fast for an extra large ship. In fact, it's blazingly fast for a lot of things. 11 kilometers per second? That's insane. This is the kind of ship you're like, you want to get somewhere and destroy something? This is the ship you drive. Well, that's my viewing on things anyway. Uh, Shield-wise, we're going to stick on... Yeah, three parent... We're going to have to take this to turn space and upgrade it with turn shields when we get the chance. Uh, though that might have to wait a while. Oh, we don't have extra large... Thrusters. Okay, we'll have to sort that. And as for shields, we're going to go to turn space and get more shields on there. Weapon-wise, we can now install the Earl King's main weapon, which, um, it's a big one. That's, uh, that's going to be fun to mod. Anyway, uh, turret groups. Now, we get Earl King turrets. These things are insane. Like, okay, I'll go over the stats in these in a bit, but we're basically going to install one of these. We'll give it a power and shield. Ooh, we'll upgrade to turret shields later. It's just we can't build those. We don't have the parts, and I'm not bothered to install them into our factories because it's a whole extra layer of junk I am not willing to deal with. Anyway, uh, you guys, yes, lots and lots of large Earl King turrets. And for the mediums, we're not even going with flak. We're going to take the medium Earl King turrets as well because they are awesome. Now, yeah, give me a second while I finish off this. There it is, fully equipped with... 22 turrets, I want to say. There's uh, five medium L Earl King turrets. In fact, let's go in here and have a look at the Earl King turrets under the encyclopedia. And what makes these so special is it's a medium turret, but it's got a range of 9.2 kilometers. Most medium turrets only have a range of about four, four and a half, as well as that its projectile speed is 3,221 meters per second. Now, we really need to put this in perspective. Uh, if we get, say, the Argon flak turrets, uh, Argon medium flak turret is here. This only has 1,500 meters per second projectile speed and an effective range of 3 kilometers. It's just weak sauce. But the Earl King medium turret actually has twice the projectile speed, three times the range, and more damage. Like, holy Christ, this thing is awesome. So I want to really try this thing and see just how much damage we can do with this. Because with a range of 9 kilometers, that means all the medium turrets and all the Alcarns, Earl King's large turrets, which also have a projectile speed of 2,000 meters per second. These are basically the equivalent of plasma. They do more damage than plasma cannons, which are the best anti-capital ship turrets you can get, by twice as much, and they've got four times the projectile speed, meaning they're even harder to dodge, and they've got a range of 9.2 kilometers, which pairs very well with the medium turrets, and will pair very well with the Earl King main battery, which has a range of 9.2 kilometers. In fact, all of them have a range of 9.2 kilometers, and they all have incredible projectile speed and damage. So yes, I'm thinking this is going to make quite a fun ship, especially considering it moving 355 meters per second and seems to be blazingly fast. And we haven't even modded this thing yet. Once we start modding this, oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's going to be a fun times. Anyway, I'm going to let that thing mod for, for to get built up for a while. We're going to need to maybe drop off some supplies. I think they're short 300 weapons components. Yeah, we can find those. We had... Definitely have weapons components lying about the place. Ah, only 2,439. I may want to up weapon component production. You know, I was wondering what was taking so long, and the ETA on the construction of all of this is one hour and three minutes. Dear God. This game. This game. <laughs> okay, okay, that's, uh, that's fine. So before we get to play with this big... T Why is it pink? I did. I picked a green color scheme. Why do we have a pink Earl King? I mean, fine, right? We'll we'll have a pink one. That's grand. It will strike fear into the hearts of our enemies. Ah, uh, great, just great. And the thing is, uh, damn it, I don't have enough time. Do I? Oh no, I'm gonna get this episode. Okay, I can't demonstrate the joy of this this episode. However, there's a few questions we have that need to be answered. One, we need to get ourselves some advanced parts for this. Namely, I want an advanced, oh, where is it? Not advanced, exceptional. We need to get our hands on an exceptional ship nano weave. That would allow us to upgrade our hull on this to like the highest level hulls. It, it gives a massive bonus to maneuverability and speed, which would make us even faster and more maneuverable, which would be incredible, of course. 
Uh, they also want an exceptional shield coil generator so that we can... Oh, we have to get to the turn shipyards as well to give a turn shield. So that we can crank up the shields. I'm thinking you can either get 70% bonus to recharge or 70% bonus to total shields. So I'm thinking total shields would probably be the best one so that we can survive one hit shots from, say, something like the turn. Then we're going to need uh, an exceptional fuel injector so that we can crank up the engines. And we can get even more speed out of them, though I'm not sure if we want... Actually, we, we should probably sacrifice travel speed for more map speed, and we could probably get this thing up to about 500 move speed, 500 meters per second. We'd be able to, like, run backwards and get out of range of most ships that are the same size as us. And then we're going to need about 23 exceptional weapon chambers. Yes, 23 exceptional weapon chambers. All of those are going to require us to kill an awful lot of Xenon, I think. We might have to get involved in a few Guild Wars. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to get all these exceptional things. I'm still doing research in the background because there are parts you have to get to do the uh, the modifications. I realize that that might have all sounded like a bit of gobbledygook, so I'm going to try and explain it here at the workbench with one of our other ships. For example, this is uh, Zippy, our scouting ship. And what we can do is we can get this ship Polisher. It's a mod that makes it, it reduces drag and all that stuff. And all it requires... Is a basic ship nanoweave and Navidium Crystallite, whatever. And just remember that Navidium Crystallite here will never change no matter what level of mod we get. So while you can get enhanced quality and exceptional quality mods, all of them require Navidium Crystallite. Uh, for example, this Lubricator mod requires Navidium Crystallite, three of it. Uh, this highest end one requires Navidium Crystallite, three of it. But what changes is the nanoweave. So it's basic ship nanoweave, then you want advanced ship nanoweave, and then exceptional ship nanoweave. And once you have exceptional, you can just, you know, build this thing, so long as you've got some Nvidiaite, which you definitely should have. We've got 2,300 of this stuff. So what we need to do is get our hands on that. But that requires us to do some missions. And normally I wasn't bothered getting these things, but for a ship of this caliber that we're getting, I want to crank this thing up to like 11. We want it to have like super fast speeds, we want its weapons to be overclocked to the bejesus, like level 3 weapons require us to get exceptional weapon chambers, and since it has 23 weapons, we're going to need 23 of these. Uh, it's also going to cost us a fortune to do them. Oh, and you can't really lose these exceptional weapon chambers. Even if we roll badly, we can recycle this and keep using it again and again. So we just need to get our hands on 23 and we're good to go. I don't know, though, if we need one for each engine. I don't think we need multiple ones for each engine. Yeah, as far as I can see, even though we have three engines on this, you only need one mod for it. So we're going to need one engine mod, one shield mod, one chassis mod, and then 23 weapons mods. So I think we're going to take the Earl King around next episode, and we're going to use a whole bunch of, do a bunch of missions to, uh get our hands on all of those things. I'm going to need to do some research in the background. I'm looking for a bit of advice here on what mods to equip the Earl King with. Now, for weapons, I was thinking the Expediter. Now, this one does not seem like a very uh, first pick sort of choice. It's weapon projectile speed. Who cares? Well, we have very fast weapon projectile speed already. This makes it even faster, and this does increase your weapon range, as far as I'm aware. You see, your weapon uh, has a weapon lifetime, as in how long the bullet exists before it disappears. And the range of your weapon is determined by how long your bullet stays alive for, as in weapon lifetime, multiplied by the weapon projectile speed. So the faster your projectile and the further the, the longer the weapon lifetime, the more range you'll have. So in theory, just say we got about, oh, say 10% projectile speed and 20% weapon lifetime when we roll that, we'd probably get about a 30% boost to range, which means we'd probably be shooting somewhere around the 12 kilometers. We'd be able to shoot 12 kilometers with all our turrets. Well, assuming we got, you know, 21 of these exceptional weapons chambers to put on it and all that stuff. So that's what I was thinking. We make something that can shoot 12 kilometers, which I thought would be just stupid. Um, yeah, that's that, that was just general plan. However, if uh, anyone out there has made their own Earl King and has come up with some other bills that might be kind of fun, just let me know and uh, we'll, we'll have a goosey. But for now, I'm definitely leaning this way. But I, my mind can't be changed if there's something more ridiculous out there. I'm going to go grab a cup of tea, or maybe two, while this thing takes 40 minutes to complete. Oh my god. Hey, does that kind of look like a rifle to you? Like, there's the handle, and then the gun goes out almost like a weird ray gun. Ooh, I'm going to come up with a name for this. How about the pink, the pink panther? Wait, no, no, no. The pink plinker, because it's it's a rifle, you plink away from a distance with it, you know, it's a long range. No, not very good, is it? Okay, I'll work on it, I'll work on it. Any suggestions, let me know, and we'll, we'll see what we come up with. But we've got to come up with some sort of name for this thing. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck.